Thank you very much for the kind, kind introduction. It's my great pleasure to present my talk in this interesting conference. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me. Then I'm going to talk about science communication things. And um, before I start my talk, I want to check only one thing. So how many audience are major in science or engineering? How many? OK, almost 80% 80, 80 right? 70 or 80%. OK, good. So let me start with um, asking a question to you. Probably all of you know about this picture. This is the movie. And this movie is about some, some famous novel. So probably you know what the writer of this novel is. What is the writer? Of course, you don't have to <laughs> answer. Shakespeare, of course. Then I want to ask this. Do you know what the second law of thermodynamics is? Of course, probably the audience who is major in science and engineering, they should know about this, right? But um, if I ask it the same question in the general public, then you know, the response is very weird. They are, you know, sometimes they are crying, and sometimes they are screaming. <laughs> but I, um, as a physicist, OK, I'm a theoretical physicist. I'm studying quantum science and quantum computer and quantum information science. As a physicist, for me, these two questions are at the same level. Actually, the second law of thermodynamics explains why time flow in only one direction. For me, that's, in some sense, that's more important, right? In some sense, but, but I don't know. But, but usually, people are, are not much um, familiar with this. And next question. Um, do you know about this? This is cogito ergo sum. OK, in the Western culture, I mean, the many people, many educated people learn Latin in high school or in junior high school. So probably they should know about this. But in Eastern culture, I mean, in, in, for example, in South Korea, people really don't know about this, right? But the meaning is very simple. The meaning is, I'm thinking, therefore, I exist, right? Now you, you, you got the point. So, so this was by Descartes, right? You should know about that. But now you seem to be scared, right? OK, do you know <laughs> what this is? Oh. <laughs> well, this is not bad. But um, if I show this to the general public, then um, probably you can imagine what, what, what is happening. And this is the Schrodinger equation, right? Schrodinger equation. Um, I can safely say that. Probably more than 99% of the phenomena which is happening in this room at this time can be explained by this equation. Okay? This equation describes atom, dynamics of motions of atoms. Then everything all, all around us is made of atoms. So, this, 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 so in, in principle, this describes everything. But people really don't know about this equation. OK, so this is the one, the key motivation of my talk today. So in 1955, Charles, Charles Snow in UK, he published a book. The title is The Two Cultures. So he claimed that um, there, are, there is two important cultures in Western, Western society, which, which are humanity and science, science and technology. But usually, the people in these two fields, they are fighting each other. They don't respect each other. They are all in conflict. And the most interesting thing is the following. The general public usually has different viewpoints for these two kinds of cultures. The people believe that they should know about humanities. But they are thinking that they don't have to know about science. They don't, you know, they, they don't need know about engineering. So why is that? Actually, I think still in, in, in South Korea, including Eastern Asia, this kind of you know, conflict between two cultures and, and, and the behavior that people 
don't want to know about the science, it's still you know, it's an ongoing issue. But why, why, people don't, why people believe that they don't have to know about science? Actually, that's because the building. I mean, this is the book written by some German, um, German writer, it's Dietrich Spanitz. Subtitle is that what man, every man should know. That's Bildung. Actually, it's, that's English translation is not the easy, usually not easy. So if somebody say culture or, or liberal arts in German, Bildung, and in Korean, Gyoyang, probably now you know that, right? So actually, the Gyoyang or Bildung is all that man should know. Actually, that guy defined the Bildung in this way. The Bildung is the ability that a person critically self-examine himself in society and practice what he has found from his introspections, 자기 성찰, introspections, okay? But the interesting thing is the following. Actually, this book is huge. It's almost 700 pages, but only 30 pages is about science. So he believed that, I don't know, actually he, he thought that science is not helpful for somebody to critically self-examine himself and practice what he has found from his introspections. Is it really true? I don't agree with this. Actually, many people believe science makes our, our life convenient. For example, you know, smartphone makes our life very convenient, but well, sometimes by using science or technology, we can make many, a lot of money, right? So probably it cannot be a building, right? It, it might not be a building, but let's just think about this. Do you know what this picture is? Watch this. Uh -huh. Yes. Good. Very nice. <laughs> so you see here, in the center, you see Sol. Sol means the, the sun. Okay? So this picture is taken from the famous book written by Copernicus. So this theory tells us that we are not in the center. Okay? If you look at the sky, then our Earth, our ground is the center. And then every other, all the planets and the stars, they are rotating around us. But now we know that our planet, the Earth, is just one of the planets of the sun, right? And even the sun is a small star that is rotating around the center of our galaxies. But actually, more than 100 billion you know, stars exist in our, our galaxies. Also in the universe, there are more than 100 billion of stars, uh, galaxies, so it means that our planet, the Earth, is tiny, tiny, small, you know, lock in the universe. It's just, we, 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 are, we, are, living on the, we, we are living on nothing. Earth is nothing. I believe this gave us a deep introspection, I believe, compared with any other humanity. But this is, you know, but actually science goes further. The mid of 19th centuries, the people still believe that, of course, now, okay, the Earth is just a you know, small planet in the universe, but at least on this planet, we are the king, we are the very special creatures among all other living things. But that's not true. Now we know that. There is some continuous chain from the virus to the human being, right? And all the living things on the Earth, they have the same biological machinery. In the biological level, they are very similar, right? They all use DNA, they all use, you know, you know the, 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 um, um, the central, the, all, all the mechanism of, of the biology is, is described by central dogma. gave us also a bit deep introspection. Now we, we, we know that all peoples are equal, right? White people and black people are the same. 
But sometimes, then, sometimes some students ask, why all people are equal? Do you know why? Why we are equal? Actually, 200 or 300 years ago, people are not, were not equal, right? There are very special people, noble people, and king, and their, their family, and normal people, and humble people. But now we believe every people are equal. Why is that? That's because the science. If you look at the people on the basis of science or biology, they are all equal. Okay? So even after we, we, we know about the biology, we have this kind of, you know, the belief. Now, they are all equal. Still in South Korea, we have some issues, you know, these issues, right? But probably near future, we probably will understand that all people are equal in, in the biological level. So, so in that sense, the science gave us, a, because of that, we are doing some, you know, some practice. Because the people equal are equal in the, in the, in the, on the basis of science, we must do something, right? If there is some difference between people, then we make that difference is removed. So in that sense, I think the science is really, really building, one of the building. Then the question is, what is science? Then what is science, scientific attitude? Probably there are many definitions for this. So um, there are many conflicts, so it, it's not easy to define precisely. But um, this is my own simple argument. So your claim or your conclusion and your result is scientific if it is made based upon material evidence. Okay? It should, be material, should have material evidence. And it should be objective. That, ob that, that evidence must be objective. And that evidence must be reproducible. So I will show you one example. The Newton's law of gravity is scientific. Why? I will show you. So um, if we, the Newton's law of motion tells us that on, on the Earth, every object should move during one second 4.9 meter. OK? So I will show you. It's easy. OK? This is material evidence, of course. And I can show you, but um, probably some other people come here, and, and she, she, she can show us. It means that is objective. I can do this, or some people in other countries, she can do this. That's objective. And also, now I can do this, but um, after this conference, I can also show you again, right? So these things are reproducible. So in this sense, the Newton's law of gravity is scientific. So if you want to be a scientific, then you must try to find these things. You, 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 you need to find evidence which must be material, objective, and reproducible. So this is the very fine example of, of this. So we all know that Galileo found that, who claimed that Earth is moving around, around the sun. Right? That, of course, based upon concrete experimental observation, Actually, he made, he by himself made the telescope. And telescope was made just before he made this, one, one year before he made this. But that guy, I mean, the, the first inventor, he only, only, only um, looked at other people and, and other armies to, to make some money. But this guy, Galileo, he was the first man to look at the sky by using the telescope. And then he found that, found this, this picture. Do you know what this picture is? In Galileo uh, time, the, usually people believe that all the stars and all the terrestrial, um, terrestrial things are described by pure mathematics. So orbit, just perfect circle, and every you know, star and, and the planet, they have perfect sphere. They are described by perfect sphere, smooth sphere. But by using telescope, Galileo found this. This is the moon, the surface of the moon. Surface of the moon is not smooth, right? He was shocked by this picture. And then he looked at this. Do you know what this picture represents? 
Yes. Are you major in history of science? <laughs> hmm? Sorry? Okay, good. Okay. Very nice. Excellent. So, this is the note written by Galileo himself. So, this circle represents Jupiter, and this, this represents the moon of the Jupiter. So, from this picture, Galileo now, you know, recognized that every star, you know, rotates around the Earth. Even Jupiter has his, his own moons. So based upon this kind of material, material evidence, Galileo finally, um, finally claimed that the, the Earth is rotating around the sun. Okay? But now we know that that kind of claim was very dangerous in his time. The reason is the following. So at that time, the church, they didn't like it. Why is that? Actually, they believed that the sun is moving, sun is rotating around the earth. Okay? Why is that? Their idea was, was based upon the Bible, some authorities. So in the Bible, the Yoshua chapter 10, you can find, find this sentence, the Yoshua pray, sun stand still over Gib Gibeon. And the God um, accept his pray, and then so the sun stood still. Because of this sentence, you know, his sun stand still means before that, sun should move. So because of this sentence, the earth is the center of the universe and the sun should move. Okay? But this is not science. This is not material evidence. So, so to do science, you need material evidence. So these kind of authorities and books and, you know, the famous person, we don't need, need them. We need Material evidence. <laughs> um, this guy claimed that he can fly. Okay? Then, um, but um, un unfortunately, he said, he, he say, um, I can fly if I'm alone. Okay? If I'm alone. Okay, um, basically, I'm not saying that he's a liar. Okay? I can refute his you know, claim, but at least his claim is not scientific. This is not scientific. Okay? This is not um, objective. After Galileo, now we know that Newton made law of mechanics, law of physics, so now we believe he is a father of physics. So now we precisely describe all the motions and locations of stars and, and planets. But in early 20th centuries, there was some revolution. We, we, probably all of you know this guy, so Albert Einstein. He claimed that Newton was wrong. Now we need new kind of space and time description. At this time, he was not a famous physicist. He was not even a professor in university. He's just a government officer in patent office. But in this was done in 1905. In 1915, he published another paper, which was you know, about uh, the curved space-time, which was the, this is talked about the general relativity. Actually, this year is the uh, 100th anniversary of the birth of general relativity. But this is theory. So he proposed some, some experiment. And then in 1919, Eddington tested his theory. So this is material evidence. Of course, this is not enough. I mean, this is only one experiment at that time. So, so still, still, we need more more evidence to, to say that this is objective, but as, since this time, we had many evidence of general relativity. So now we believe that general relativity is correct and scientific. It means that Newton was wrong. Okay? This is what science is going. So basically, we, we don't, of course, sometimes we, we, we need to trust other theory, others' theory, but 
basically, if we have evidence, material evidence, then that is true. That is correct. Even Newton's theory can be wrong. But more interestingly, Albert Einstein was also wrong. Um, Einstein made general theory of relativity. He also one of the founder of quantum mechanics. But actually, he, for his, uh, during his whole life, he didn't accept the basic concept of quantum mechanics. But now we have many evidences. We have plenty of many evidences. Quantum mechanics is correct. It means that Einstein is wrong. Okay. So, to be a scientific, we need material evidence. So evidence is always very important. So we need experimental confirmation. Okay. So, so far I've talked about the science. What is scientific? What, what, what's the meaning of scientific? But now I'm talking about the scientific thinking. Actually, to be a scientific, there are several levels. So level one is the most elementary level, which is the reasonable thought. The ne next level is, is a slightly more sophisticated, which is quantitative thought. And finally, the level three is, is not easy. At this level, we, we also know about the limitation of science. I think South Korea is the level one, still level one. That's why we try to make some science communication between scientists and, and the general public. OK, let me briefly, about, uh, uh, briefly talk about level one, reasonable thoughts. Probably you, you know this, right? So long time ago, long time ago, people do this, OK, the human sacrifice. But now we, we know that there is no scientific relation between the human sacrifice and the weather. This is stupid. Stupid things, but human did this for a long time, very long time. And people believe this kind of things. The Earth is flat. But of course, this is natural things. You know, if you look at you, around us, then obviously the, the Earth is flat. So it's not easy. Um, this is not obvious. If you think about very carefully, very carefully, then. Um, without that, it's not easy to you know, go beyond the Earth's sphere. That's not easy things. Only 20 or 30 years ago, there was apartheid in, in South Africa. That's a separation between white people and, and, and black people. Okay? So still, our society in, in the Earth, on the Earth, still we need reasonable thought. This kind of things are still is going. But do you think that the South Korea is very developed in this sense? I don't think so. Because in 2012, this is an article published in Nature. The title is South Korea Surrenders to Creationist Demands. I was very shocked about <laughs> from this. So the, some, some creationists of the church they try to change the textbook of high school and, and junior middle school. Of course, finally, the scientists try to stop it, so, so that things are stopped. Okay? But these things are still happening in South Korea. So I think that still our society needs reasonable thinking, reasonable thought. But reasonable thought itself, I mean, this is kind of qualitative you know, things. This is not enough because our sense are very. Our sense is not perfect. Let me show you one example. Which one is longer? Which table is longer? Seem to be the left one, right? Seem to be left one. But um, this is very common mistake. They have the same length, so you know our sense is you know very it, it, it's, it's not precise sometimes and, and I will show you one more one more funny example do you think that this girl is beautiful it looks looks beautiful 
but human eyes are you know very sensitive to recognize the face, human face. But if you if you upside down, then you have your 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 sense is very 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 much biased for one direction. So if you rotate, then you you, you can clearly recognize the face. So we need more quantitative quantitative analysis to have the correct answer. So let me show you one, one famous example. This was very, very, very well known in, in statistics. So there is one test, age test, with 95% success rate. If I do this test, but the result is positive, then what should I do? I must spend my own money to enjoy my life? No. So in the case of U US, 285 age patient per 100,000 people, okay? Then the test is 95% success rate. It means that it successfully select 271 patient, real patient, among 285 patients. But it also mistakenly select 4,986 non-patient, right, among 99,715 non-patient due to 5% failure rate. Then the question is, if your test proved positive, then what is the probability that you are really a patient? Okay, this is the 95% success rate, so you probably think that probability should be nine, more than 90%. But that's not true. Actually, the number is only 5%. The reason is the following. The total number of, um, total number of, of which test proof positive is summation of 271 and 4,986. Among those number, the real patient, the number of real patient is 271. So only the probability that you are really, really a patient is only 5%, okay? Yeah. It seems to be strange, right? But this is very well known things. And one more. Two months uh, or several months ago, the MERS virus broke out in South Korea. It was a very serious issue. And it was a very serious international issue. But after about one month after outbreak, some of, uh, one of my colleagues, who is a statistical mechanics expert, he collects data and, and draws this kind of picture. The y-axis represents the total number of MERS patients in, in South Korea, and x-axis is the time. Actually, this data can be taken from the government website. And then he tried to fit this data by using the rate equation. You, know, you, you can see the left upper sign. This formula is very well known, that usually, you know, very simple equation, but, but um, it can describe the epidemics very efficiently. And you see here, at the end of June, I and my colleagues, we, we, we knew that, okay, this outbreak will be gone within one week. But at this time, every mass media and every people are very concerned about the mess. But um, of course, we didn't open this data to the public because if this is not true, then we were very, you know, <laughs> big, big, big in trouble. But this was done by Chang Bong Hyun in Korea Institute of Advanced Science. But sometimes we need very careful, quantitative, and Analytic, uh, quantitative analysis to have good decision. Finally, I'm talking about the le level three. At, at level three, now we should know about the limitation of science. So one, I will give you one, one example, which is about radioactivity, because this is now a big issue in South Korea. 
Um, the usually the radiation exposure is measured by REM, REM. So for example, 0.001 REM means the exposure of X-ray in the hospital. And 0.2 REM is just natural exposure. In every place, you are exposed by this amount of radiation. That is 0.2. Because of that, many people die of cancer. Okay, that's the percentage is about 20, 20%. But we, we know that um, probably the late 1970, there was an accident, nuclear accident in former Soviet Union. So the people should evacuate from, from that dangerous area, right? So at the time, the nuclear power plant was if, if exploded. So finally, Soviet government made, made a decision that the people should be evacuated, but the people exposed by radiation larger than 45 lam. Okay, 45 lam. Actually, it's not easy to decide that number, but 45 lam means if you expose that you know, radiation, then it means that the, the people who die of cancer I mean, uh, the cancer incident rate is increased by 1.8%. Do you think that this is the right decision or not? Is this the scientific decision or not? Actually, finally, the Soviet government decided this number. But then, my question is that, do you leave your home? if your cancer incident rate increases by 1.8%? Actually, in Chernobyl, finally, 30,000 people were evacuated by the government. If they, don't, if, if, if they are not evacuated, then still um, the people who naturally die of cancer is about 6,000 because of you know, the natural radiation. But, because they are not evacuated, additionally, 500 people will die of cancer. Now we are talking about the price of 500 people. Who decides this number? Of course, if you think that 500 is very big, right? Well, but even, you know, we, 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 should, we should save at least one person, I mean, at most one then probably more than a million people should be evacuated. So it thought it, this decision is depend on the situation that you have. I think this is not science. Science can give you this number, the probability. But the, the, the decision of this number is totally kind of the politi political issue. Now we know that the smoking is very bad for our health. So, so the statistics tell us that 80% of long-term smokers die of lung cancer. Then, if you believe you should leave home due to the 1.8% increase of cancer incident rate, then you, sh you should stop smoking, right? If the government decided that the people should be evacuated because of 1.8% increase of cancer incident rate, then the, then the government should the people stop smoking. But we don't do that. This is not science, okay? So we should distinguish something, I mean, the scientific problem and political problem. This is very important. Actually, several years ago, there was some big conflict in South Korea. Uh, big, uh, this is due to the med medical disease. So every people um, didn't want to import you know, the meat, cow, cow meat from US. So we had a very big demonstration. But at this time, the media said, OK, the scientists say the cow from US is safe. Right? But the government, that is usually, you know, the government say the meat is safe. Meat from US is safe. But some scientists, other scientists said, that's very dangerous. You don't eat that. 
But this is not science. As I told you, this is also the problem of probability. Okay? And I also that this, this kind of decision also depends on people, especially the trust between government and people. It totally depends on that. Even though government decide make this is make, 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 make some decision, if even though that decision is very good, that is you know the most efficient decision, but if the people don't trust the government, then that kind of policy doesn't work. So we should think, dis distinguish some scientific issue from political issues. So this is the third level. But this is not easy. Always there is some conflict. So to, have, to make a good decision, first we need trust between government and people. Actually, in MERS outbreak, I, I think we didn't have trust between government and people. So the government tried to hide every information. That made the situation much, much worse. So it's, it's a very you know, tricky issue. But anyway, this is just level three. But I, I think we are not in this level. Our, 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 our country should go to the level two, at least level two. So my message is simple. To make our society better, we need more science. So our people must be more scientific. I'm so by talking about what the scientific means. So f for last um, several minutes, I will talk about what I have done. Actually, I'm a physicist, so my main job is to do research. But sometimes I also doing some science communication because I believe that it's also very important as a, as a scientist. So for, for more than, uh, for about 10 years, we manage this web journal. His name is Crossroad. This is bilingually written, so it's Korean and English. So it's mainly it's about science communication. So some, some cases, scientists write an article, and some artists or other, you know, some, some writers, they, they write some articles. So we try to make some connection between science and non-science things, all, all other field people. And also, we, every, every year, we are also open some school, which is only about the science communication. So they are mostly a major in science and engineering, but during three days, we are only talking about communication between science and people, okay? So if you are interested in this, then please apply in this winter. And every year, we select 10 books, 10 science books for the public. So now we have a huge list of science books, which is good for the public. And with this list, we have some lecture series. So we have 10 lecture series about, so in this lecture, the, the authors of the book and the, the, the translator and sometimes experts, they are talking about the book. And we also publish the book. We, we ourselves publish book. So it's some, sometimes we publish the science fiction novels and sometimes, you know, this kind of things and this kind of advertisement of our book. You know this guy, <laughs> Jae Seng Chong, who is a professor of this university. And also every, um, um, two times every year, we had some um, fusion workshop between science and art. So here mostly, probably half of them are science and half of them uh, writers and artists and 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 and, and producer in 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 TV and and some others. So we discuss science and we we also enjoy the sky. This is the observatory on the mountain. And actually, actually, one of the audience was the Jong Woo one. So he deeply moved 
during this conference. And then after this workshop, he made a decision to have some podcast. You, you know this guy. Now this science podcast is one of the most famous podcasts in South Korea. So he made a decision during this, this workshop. So now the, this, this podcast has been downloaded more than, more than 4 million times. So this is kind of news because science usually is not so popular in South Korea. But nowadays it became popular more and more. We believe this is one of the reasons of that is because of this podcast. And this is two years anniversary. So we are, so my message is that we are doing many things, but um, actually we all are scientists. So this is kind of second job. So I, I believe we need more expert, more specialist on this subject. But anyway, even though we don't have enough time to do this, we are scientists, but we are continue to do this because we believe, yeah, it's one other thing, we believe science can make our society better. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.